Hey y'all. So today's gonna be a little bit different <clears throat> of a video from what y'all normally see uh, on our homestead. So as you noticed in the title, I was kidnapped, I survived, and here's what I want you to know. I want to use this unique opportunity that God gave me as a platform to let others know that this is real, it does happen, and there are things that you can do that will help you and your family be more safe. So when I was 18 years old, I want to share my story with y'all because uh, I feel like that'll make it more real. Um, it is very personable. This is not something I'm extremely comfortable doing. But when I was 18, I was walking through a parking lot and a gentleman saw me and followed me to my car. I was not aware that he was following me. I sat down, grabbed my notebook. I started making notes. He opened the door and got in the car, showed me the butt of a gun and told me in his words, don't do anything stupid. So he forced me to drive to a hotel where he had checked in. He assaulted me and forced me to stay with him for about three hours. While I was with him, he shared with me some of the struggles that started as a child. Uh, he had battled um, several different things growing up so he ended up making really bad decisions the older he got, which obviously led to the extreme of kidnapping, which is where we both found ourselves. That opened the door to um, be able to witness to him. So I was able to share with him after he opened up and started sharing with me about his struggles. I was able to share with him that counselors were great, um, but his only deliverance was gonna be from above. Only Jesus was gonna be able to deliver him from his bondage that he had dealt with for so long. So after several hours, he let me go. Now, there are not many people that live through what I went through. Um, there are not many people that are able to walk out that door. I feel like God allowed me um, to walk out those doors to first and foremost give him the glory because only by his mercy and grace that my life was spared. It was nothing more than the Holy Spirit that took over me and allowed me to witness to that man because I could have in no way, shape, form, or fashion been able to do that on my own. So that really leads me to the whole point of this video is I want to share um, with ladies, particularly young moms who um, may get distracted easy with small children, the importance of several things that I feel like will help keep you and your family safe. And the first one being pay attention to your surroundings. When you get out of your car, and you're, even if you're walking in a parking lot, um, if you walk into a bank or you're walking into the grocery store, put the phone down, put it in your purse, pay attention to your surroundings, um, examine the people around you. Now, I'm not saying like it, weirdly examine, but acknowledge their behavior or that are they acting suspicious? Are they acting aggressive? Um, so that you can monitor the situations that's going on around you. So first, I would say pay attention to your environment. Wherever you're at, if you're walking in a parking lot, if you're grocery shopping in the grocery store, if you're sitting in church, wherever you may be, that you're outside of your home to pay attention to your surroundings. Secondly, I would say something very easy to do is lock your car doors. So for me, I feel like 
I missed that first and second step. I had so much on my mind walking through the parking lot. I was not even aware that he was following me. Secondly, I got in my car and started to write notes. I could have very easily reached over and locked the door. So you may find yourself going through fast food place and your toddler starts having a meltdown because that's real life, right? I mean, that, those things really happen. And you have to pull over and handle your co toddler, calm your toddler down. Your toddler may puke in the back of the vehicle and you're out cleaning that up. Uh, when you get back in your car, you get everything back together and you're getting your thoughts together or you're calling your husband, telling your husband, uh, little Johnny has got a stomach virus, you know, whatever it is, just lock your doors. It's, that's something that's pretty easy to do. Thirdly, I would say look into your state laws. I know not every state um, has laws for you to be able to conceal carry a weapon. But if your state does, I would highly suggest doing that. Criminals are called criminals because they don't obey the law. So there's no amount of laws that can be made that is gonna make them obey the law, okay? So the law-abiding citizens should have the right to, defect, to defend and protect themselves. So if your law will allow, your state law will allow you to go through a class and it does cost, and handguns obviously do cost, but if your state will allow you to go through that course, I highly recommend it. It will be for your best protection and your family's best protection. Our instructor did a very, very good job of pointing out not to tell everybody you have a handgun on you and only pull that thing out when it's life or death situation. Because if there is a situation that arises where you have to pull your gun out, it better be life or death. Because if there's someone in the room that is knows that you have a gun, you're a threat to them, therefore you're gonna be their first target. So keep those types of things in mind. Take the class, highly recommend it. It's for the best, but you need to know your laws and you need to know your laws about carrying as well. And last but not least, don't put yourself in a peculiar situation. If you like to run, I'm a runner, something I enjoy do, doing. Don't put yourself in a situation where you're gonna go run by yourself. Find a running buddy if that's not an option for you. Um, get on your buy, sell, or trades and find a used treadmill. Most of the time you can find them for $100 or $200 and that's something, whether it's rain, sleet, or snow, you can use all the time. If you go into the bank and there's a very agitated person at the teller, um, seems very frustrated and agitated, turn around and go through the drive through So, Watch for peculiar situations. If you get uncomfortable, it's best to remove yourself, remove yourself from the situation. So with all that being said, I hope that that opened your eyes, that there are real threats out there. I hope that that gave you a few tips to put in, in the back of your mind that will help keep you and your family safe. And I can't let this go without giving God all the glory because like I mentioned to y'all earlier, it is only by his mercy and grace that I was able to survive what I went through, live to tell my story, and all the glory and honor goes to him. God bless y'all.